Hey guys, long time no see. Welcome back to the channel. I've been so busy with other projects in the garden that I totally forgot that I need to sow my summer seeds. So it's still not too late, thankfully. I have a pretty long growing season here, so I'm going to go and start some, uh, sowing some of those summer seeds. And I just wanted to share a couple of the varieties with you guys that I'm doing this year. And also, this is the gourd that I've been saving from last year. So I'm going to see if we can crack into it and see what we've got. Uh, I know that at least we're going to be able to harvest some seeds from it. So we've got some seeds in there for sure. I don't know if we'll be able to get any good loofah out of it, um, just because sometimes these are susceptible to molding and whatnot, but we'll see. So we'll crack into this at the end of the video as well and see if I can harvest some gourd seeds to plant out as well. So normally you want to get your summer seeds like uh, tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants out like eight weeks or so before the final frost in your area but I think we're already at that point here because it's really hot all of a sudden and uh, nights are still in their 40s but the daytime's gotten pretty hot around here but like I said earlier uh, we have a pretty long growing season here so I'm not too worried about it some things certainly I would recommend direct sowing at this point like beans and gourd seeds which is what I'm probably going to do with those but peppers tomatoes and eggplants I'm still going to start in seedling trays um, I've got some right here and uh, the beauty of it though is since it's kind of warm outside I could probably just put a humidity dome on top of that and leave them outside to germinate instead of taking them indoors and starting them under lights so you know, I have a couple options here we'll just kind of see what works out the best and what's the easiest process um, if you keep them outdoors and grow them in the humidity dome in the seedling trays then you kind of avoid having to do that hardening off process where you have to bring them in and out so since the weather's pretty warm, I'm probably going to do that and just see how it goes. But first of all, guys, I want to show you guys the pepper varieties that I've got for this year. Um, all these seeds I got from Baker's Creek. Um, it's a really reputable seed company, and I've had really good success with their seeds and plants. But um, here's a couple of the ones that I'm doing. So this is a Leba pepper. Corbachi. Serrano. Puma. And all of these are such unique varieties, guys. I haven't tried any of these varieties before, so I'm super excited to see what's going to happen. We've got a sweet bell pepper called King of the North. Jigsaw, which is kind of an ornamental pepper, but it's supposed to be tasty as well, according to the description. Um, this is actually a Bangladeshi pepper. It's called, uh, it's basically a ghost pepper, but as you can see, it's called Pucholokia. It's uh, supposed to be super duper spicy, so I'm excited about that one. And I've got Buena Mulata. And this is an interesting one. I think it's called uh, Goronong. Oh, look at that interesting shape. So a lot of these peppers, I'm growing not just for the taste of them. I know peppers grow really well here in our hot, dry desert environment. But as you can see, um, I do a lot of things for the beauty of it. So as you can see, all these beautiful varieties, a lot of which most of which I haven't um, tried before. So just super excited to see how that turns out. And I hope I can still have a garden to show you guys this summer, even though I'm starting off so late. So now let me show you some of the uh, tomato varieties that I'm starting. Once again, some really pretty varieties. Here we've got Queen of the Night, Green Zebra, Pantano Romanesco, Sart Roloise, that is such a cool looking tomato right there. Big Rainbow, Pink Jazz, Dr. Whitey's Yellow. I've heard really good things about this one. Tomato Carbon, Mushroom Basket, White Beauty. So excited, I've never had a white tomato. We'll see how that goes. So that was all my tomatoes and a couple other things that I'm gonna sow. Uh, for the summer so with my okra I've been sowing the same okra seeds for years and years I'll harvest them and then I'll uh, plant them again and they're usually the uh, burgundy variety or the emerald green but you know I haven't had really good production with okra you know they pop out okras every few days or so but it takes a while to gather enough to be able to do something with it so I looked up and I got this variety called heavy hitter And from what I've read, it's supposed to give you tons of okra, as you can see in the picture. So I'm excited about that. That would be a good production okra. And I also got this interesting one called Star of David. 
it looks a lot different whenever you cut these okras into slices. It has a different shape than your normal one. I'm also growing some slow bolt cilantro. I have cilantro growing right now. It's doing really well, but since the weather is warming up, I'm afraid they're going to go and bolt. Hopefully not anytime soon, but hopefully uh, starting this slow bolt will help out and uh, kind of even things out for the season. I'm also starting some green magic uh, broccoli seeds because I know those do really well here in our environment. Um, I'm trying to gather some seeds from the broccoli that I have left out that's flowering. I'll show you guys those things here in just a second. And then for cabbages, I, I told you guys about my cabbages in the last video. So I got a variety called All Seasons. I don't have the packet with me but it's supposed to do really well in the heat too so we'll experiment with that this year and see how that goes. And of course guys this is just a sampling of all the things I'm going to plant. Um, I do a lot of different gourds. I'll be doing my regular old bottle gourd, bitter gourd, uh, snake gourd, etc. This is one of the new types of snake gourd that I'm going to be planting that Baker Creek happened to have and it's supposed to be really huge and just really interesting looking as you can see. They're supposed to be really really big so I'm excited to start these. And of course if we can get some viable seeds out of this thing hopefully some of this beautiful loofah gourd that we're gonna harvest from our own vegetable that we grew here which means it sh probably should do much better in our environment. And these Baker Creek seeds you guys just the photography alone gets you so excited about planting them. I just couldn't help myself but to buy all these varieties but I think it'll pay off. I've had good success with their seeds in the past. I just wanted to show you guys my cilantro real quick before I start sowing the seeds. As you can see they're doing really well. Growing fast but hopefully not too fast where it leads to bolting. Probably gonna harvest some soon. You guys this is my beautiful broccoli plant that is fully in bloom right now and I have wrapped the netting around it so as to still protect my Swiss chard and everything still going on in there but this is open to the air so that the pollinators can get to it and hopefully pollinate the flowers and get me some good green magic seeds. Alright guys, for sowing seeds it's pretty straightforward. I think I have a couple of videos on my channel already on how to do this. Um, this is just regular old potting mix, nothing fancy. I have uh, one of your regular old seed starting trays here. It has a humidity dome and a tray underneath as well. And then some plant labels, a marker, and some scissors. Oh, and a chopstick. You guys won't believe how handy this comes in into the garden. This is one of my favorite garden tools to be honest with you. Keep in mind the soil is pre-moistened, so that way whenever everything is planted up, it should be able to uptake that water pretty easily. I'm not adding any amendments or anything. The only thing I'll probably do, which is optional, is after I have everything planted up, I'll probably just top off with some vermiculite. Anyways, I'm going to go and fill these cells up with the soil. I'm going to take out any big chunks that I find, just throw them in my raised beds less obstacles that your baby seedlings face, the easier it will be on everybody. So as you can see guys, I tamp things down pretty well and then keep leveling it off with a little bit more soil until they're pretty full. I keep it pretty level. You don't want to compact the soil too much. All right, and we're going to start with the Booth Jolokia first. I'm so excited about this super hot ghost pepper variety. So two ways to do this, guys. Some people will just dibble a hole right there in the middle and drop two or three seeds in. What I usually like to do is I'll do one in each corner. That way, instead of thinning, I can just separate the plants and uh, still get a good harvest out of them. So I'm going to do about six cells here. and two seeds in each cell. These go down about a quarter of an inch or so. The chopstick also has some markings and that's that first marking is about a quarter of an inch. 
All right, y'all, once you have your seeds in, you just stamp it down with your finger. Just make sure it's nice and firm. Make sure that that seed makes good contact with the soil. And then I usually like to just drizzle some water on the top gently with my squirt bottle to just get that a nice good start. So they'll be going into this tray and I'll usually fill this with water and then just set the whole seedling tray in there just so all the cells get good watering. And that's how I generally water my seedlings until they're ready to go. And that's it guys, it's gonna be the same process for each and every seed. These trays come with a humidity dome which is nice and tall. I love that. And so I'll probably just keep that on there until things start emerging. And once we have leaves and everything, I'll open this up periodically to let it air out. But overall, until they germinate, um, I'll probably put them in just some shade or part shade where they can get bright indirect light. Once I start seeing germination, I tend to start putting them out into more and more sunlight so that they can just naturally harden off with the weather. Okay guys, and now the more exciting part. Let's crack into this guy and see what we get. I'm hoping to be able to harvest some fresh loofah seeds from this. All right guys, so here I've got a bucket to collect the seeds and then of course my loofah cord. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off one end here and probably down the middle or this wide end right here and we're gonna shake out the loofah seeds. After that, I'm gonna see about peeling this off and see if we can salvage any of the loofah to use as a scrub. Let's go and start with the wide end. Now, I do see some mold on here, which is kind of concerning, um, but we'll just cut that off and see. Hopefully there's some salvageable loofah in there. Ooh, that doesn't look good. Look at that. Really moldy and bad. That's not good. This part's not too bad. Got some seeds, you guys. Look at that. Doesn't seem to be any seeds in there. This end section of the loofah doesn't seem salvageable at all, so I'll probably just have to toss this. But you guys, we got some good seeds in there. They're not all good, but it's better than nothing. I only need a few to start the season off. So, I'm going to be picking these nice, fat, healthy looking seeds right here that are all black and smooth. Let's see if I can work on this loofah scrub a little bit. You can also soak these to help the peels come off a little easier, but I'm not really needing that here. It's kind of just coming off. Mm. This is not really going to work, to be honest with you guys. It's kind of brittle and just kind of breaking apart. That's not how loofah is. And I don't know why. Sometimes I get really good loofahs. Sometimes I don't. It just depends. So unfortunately, no salvageable loofah scrubs, but got plenty of seeds and that's all I need. We're just going to try again. But anyways, guys, that's all I've got for today. Thank you so much for hanging out and seeing what I'm doing here with my seeds, even though I'm a little bit late. Like I said, hopefully I still have a garden to show you guys this summer. Um, and thanks for watching the loofah part as well. Um, I'm excited to share this process with you guys and then kind of follow and journey the growth of these plants with you all up until the harvest and beyond. So super excited about that. I still need to clean up some beds. Got so much work to do, but thanks again guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.